Hello everybody, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. Today, we are going to trap the Earth between two massive black holes and see how the extreme gravitational pull of these will rip apart the Earth. Also, I will be doing things that you guys have suggested on the YouTube comment section. So, let's get started. Let's create a new simulation and add the Earth. I'll make it still so it doesn't orbit anything and just hangs out in the space. Let's add two black holes on either sides of the Earth. The mass of each one of these is equal to mass of the Sun. These are not exactly at the distance I want these to be, but I will adjust that in a moment. But before we start the simulation, we need to do two things. First, let's change the background color to green so we can see the black holes better because they are not properly visible with this black background. And second, we need to lock the positions of the black holes so they don't move or collide with each other or just shoot off into the space. Let's lock the position of the Earth also. Otherwise, it will be swallowed by the one of these black holes in a blink of an eye. All right, everything is set. Let's hit play and see what happens. It may look like that nothing is happening, but the Earth is under enormous stress. It's in a cosmic tug of war, with each black hole trying to pull it toward itself. Let's speed up the time and see what happens next. Wow, look at that. The Earth's surface is cracking and breaking apart. Chunks of rock and water are coming out of it. The temperatures are rising rapidly, reaching over 6,000 degrees Celsius. The debris from the Earth is being sucked by the black holes and flung out into the space. Look at the size difference between the Earth and the black holes. The black holes are tiny compared to the Earth, but their mass is enormous. Let's speed up the time some more and see what happens next. Okay, the Earth is starting to spin. That's not supposed to happen. We made it still when we added it, but the gravity from the black holes is so strong that it's making it rotate. I want to see how long the Earth can last. So let's keep going and see what happens next. The sides of the Earth that are facing the black holes are glowing blue from the heat. Let's check the Earth's mass and radius. Wow, the Earth has lost 74% of its mass and the radius has shrunk to half of the original radius. It's barely recognizable as a planet anymore. It's more like a fireball. It has gone through some drastic changes. Let's speed up the time a bit more and see how this ends. And, boom, there it goes. It has exploded into a million pieces and shot back out into interstellar space. Our next suggestion is to increase the mass of Earth equal to Jupiter while keeping its radius same. Okay, let's do that. Let's create a new simulation and go to Earth. Let's slow down the time and turn off the atmosphere and clouds to see it clearly. Jupiter is 318 times more massive than Earth, but because we have to keep the radius same and only increase its mass, so let's lock the radius first. Now let's start increasing Earth's mass slowly. The increase in mass is resulting in a stronger gravitational pull that is causing the sea levels to rise. The continents are starting to disappear and are getting covered with ocean, and we haven't reached 1% of Jupiter's mass yet. About 80% of the land is gone underwater due to increased ocean level. Okay, we have reached 75% of Jupiter's mass. Let's see how it's affecting the moon. It's getting pulled towards the Earth. And kaboom, the moon got pulled and eaten by the Earth. The collision has generated a lot of energy and has turned Earth into a fireball. But let's keep increasing the mass. Okay, we have reached the Jupiter's mass. The temperatures are extremely high due to the moon collision. Let's speed up the time and let it cool down. Let's zoom out and check if its orbit around Sun is still intact. Okay, the orbit is fine, which is a bit surprising. All of Earth is covered in water except the poles that are covered with ice. 
the average temperature has increased to about 20 degrees Celsius. Orbital and rotational periods are still unaffected. But look at the surface gravity. It has increased enormously. It has reached to 3,117 from 9.8 meters per second square. The temperatures at equator are the highest reaching 23 degrees Celsius and lowest on poles at 7 degrees. The escape velocity has increased from 11 kilometers per second to 199. Earth similarity has dropped to 17% and the life likelihood has dropped to just 6.6%. So, this is how the Earth will look if its mass is increased equal to Jupiter's while keeping the radius same. Our next suggestion is to launch a black hole at the Sun and see what happens to the solar system. And I am going to do exactly that. In my previous video, I made the Earth rotate insanely fast. You can check out that video, the link is in description. And also hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel and would like to see more Universe Sandbox content. So, here is our solar system. Let's go to add. Select Monge. We have pre-made black holes in the Universe Sandbox. Let's go with one that has mass equal to the Sun. And let's launch it right at the Sun. Okay, it's headed right towards the center of solar system with a speed of 14.5 kilometers per second. It's starting to pull everything. It's pulling the sun towards it. It has disrupted the orbit of every object. Its velocity has increased due to the gravitational pull and has reached a 54 kilometers per second. The sun is about to get eaten by the black hole. And here it goes. It just ate the sun and took its mass. Also, the velocity got decreased due to the impact. Let's see what happens to the planets. Seems like it took the place of the sun and everything has started to orbit it. Let's speed up the time and see if the orbits hold. These are working just fine. Let's go the Earth and see what's going on there. With the sun gone, the Earth froze completely. So this would happen if we launched a black hole into our solar system. Our next suggestion is to give Earth a lot of moons and see what happens. There is a pre-built simulation in Universe Sandbox that contains 50 moons of different sizes added around the Earth. So, let's open that simulation. Here is Earth with 50 moons added around it. Let's hit the play button and see how it will turn out. Let's speed up the time a bit. There are so many moons. They are started to collide with each other. The collisions between moons are generating a lot of fragments that are getting pulled by Earth. Some of the moons are starting to collide with Earth. Earth's gravity is also causing the moons to lose mass, which comes within its Roch limit. The dust clouds are a result of that defragmentation of the moons. Earth got completely bombarded with fragments generated by collisions and also the moons getting pulled by it. Look at this one. Three of them are stuck together. It's getting crazy. Out of the 50 moons, just seven of them are still there. Others got either destroyed or escaped Earth's gravity and shot into the space.
This one looks cool. Let's get closer to it. It has vegetation and water on one side and is glowing red hot on the other. As there is no sun to keep these warm, everything will eventually freeze over. It got too close and got itself ripped by Earth. So this is what's remaining. Just two of them are now orbiting the Earth. So this is how the Earth will turn out if we gave it 50 moons. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Universe Sandbox content. And if you have any suggestions for what I should do next, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to make that happen. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.